few months ago, I created a video explaining how I was starting on Shopify to sell my print on demand products. And to ramp up the success of this store, I was periodically hiring Fiverr audits to take a look at my store and recommend how to make it better. Every single one of these audits was focused on CRO, conversion rate optimization. So I could actually convert the traffic that I was sending to my store. So today I'm gonna to be covering the 12 most helpful tips I got from doing these audits that I actually saw an increase in conversion rate from using. So for context, I opened my store in September of 2023. I didn't really touch it until October is when I started actually making changes and actually using the store. But since then I have made 32,000 USD in revenue and I just passed 604 orders. My first audit was done at the end of October when I was not getting really any sales. I was sending traffic to my site, nothing was happening and I got a major increase in conversion rate. This was also combined with Q4 which just naturally has a bigger conversion rate because there are more people willing to buy. So. As expected, this did flatline a little bit after, and we went back to 1%, which I wasn't really happy about. So I did another audit around February and slowly implemented, and then we saw the increase come in around March and then April. And then right now I'm hovering at 1.7%, and I just had one more audit done, and I got some brand new tips that I just implemented in my store, but I haven't exactly seen how they're gonna work yet, but they were recommended by a few different people and I have a feeling they're gonna make a really big difference. I don't currently have a great email marketing strategy in place, which I know is going to be a huge new point that I take over next to really increase this conversion rate. But today we're just gonna be talking about the on-screen optimizations that I was recommended. So this here is not the current site I'm making sales with, but it's the one I'm gonna be trying to grow with you guys and actually show tutorials with on this YouTube channel. So this site is not live yet, but I've implemented everything that I've implemented in my actual selling store into this store to show you guys. The first thing that I was told to add was this chat button and I use the app Shopify inbox to do this. When you get chats you'll actually get notified and you'll get the messages right in your Shopify dashboard. This actually shows people that there's somebody live and somebody that they can contact easily if they have questions without having an obvious way for someone to contact you, even with a contact page. A lot of people are expecting this kind of chat button that they see a lot on websites now, and it instills this feeling of trust. The next one looks like this one here. It says free shipping to, depends on where they're actually browsing from, and then order within the next blank, and you will get this between June 4th and June 18th. And you can actually put in how long your production is gonna take, how long it's going to take to deliver, so that your customer has an expectation on when this is going to arrive. How many times have you been shopping and something doesn't have an estimated delivery date? Chances are you're not going to purchase if you have zero clue if this is gonna arrive in one week or in five months. This app is called Estimated Delivery Date. It does have a free version, which I'm on right now. And you can take a look here. You can change any of the text change some of the variables. You can also go to the top here and change your settings. So you can change what your delivery working days are, how long your products typically take to get delivered, how long they take to make, so that this is actually accurate with your production and delivery timelines. The next one is to add the ability for people to actually track their product. So in my bar over here, I created a track my order and I have an order tracking page where people can actually find out the state us of their delivery. This app is called Parcel Panel. So they do have a free version. They also have their currently limited time offer so you can get more tracking before you actually have to upgrade to the paid version. And then you're also able to add in customized shipping notifications and you can change this. Right now, I just have the basic settings on for my store. One of the biggest factors to if someone actually trusts your store is social proof. So you definitely need a rating app on your store with real reviews. I love the way the integrations actually look with looks. You can have your reviews showing on your homepage. You can have them showing the star rating under your catalog 
page. You can show all the, your reviews for a certain product on the product page anywhere that can get attention and have people trust to actually buy from your store. If you have previous reviews, say from Etsy or you've sold somewhere else before, you're also able to upload your own reviews. These should be real. People can sniff out a fake review from miles away. And even better if you can get any photo reviews. Looks allows you to actually request getting reviews and then you can give people a coupon when they give you a review with a picture or without a picture, either way you would like. And the other part of Looks that I use is referrals. So Looks has a referrals program where you can have this show to someone after they purchase or it can even show on your homepage that if someone refers a friend, both of them can get either a discount or a certain amount off. So give five, get five. And now you've just enticed two people to purchase from you. This also is free word of mouth advertising, the absolute least amount of work you have to do to get a sale. But if you don't wanna use looks and you've already built a huge brand on Etsy, I actually started on my store with a Reputon Etsy reviews, which just imports all of your products onto your Shopify store. The issue is I sell a lot more on Etsy than I'm actually selling on my Shopify store. So I have switched to fully using looks, even though it does take a little bit more and not all my reviews are brought over anymore because now I have to manually bring them over. But if you are selling the same things on Etsy as you are selling on your Shopify store, then this Reputon Etsy reviews is a great way to bring over social proof with just the click of a button. Flavio is the next one that I have been recommended like crazy for using to build up your email list. With Clavio, you're able to both do email marketing and you're also able to do SMS mobile marketing. I'm sure you have seen both of those tactics used pretty much from every single e-commerce brand out there. Some people might do either or, or some people do both. With Clavio, you're able to set up different types of campaigns, welcome campaigns. So you can ask someone for their email address and promise them 15% off. And then with that, they're subscribed to this email list. You'll give them that coupon and then you can continue sending them emails to remind them of your store. You can set up abandoned cart emails. So if someone leaves something in their cart, you can remind them it's there. You can bring back customers who have purchased before, people who have abandoned checkout and so much more. This is one I mentioned. I currently have my campaigns turned on. I have my welcome discount turned on. I have my abandoned cart. I have my post purchase email. I have my abandoned checkout. But what I need to start doing is actually really learning email marketing. So that's probably gonna be the next thing I learn and the next thing that I try to share on here. If you have any resources for me, let me know in the comments below. So the next tool shows up when I add something to cart. I get this pop-up that says get extras for your product. I can totally customize this. I haven't really yet. You're able to upsell other products. So I can offer 10% off now if you want to also add this to your cart and you can add any products to this recommendations. You can have it do it automatically. And this tool is called Candy Rack. Candy Rack is more so an upsell app, but it can get customers to come back because not only does it offer upsells during the checkout process and the add to cart process, but also after they purchase and during their thank you time. So if they were on the fence about adding something to their order, or maybe they didn't know if they wanted to purchase a second shirt, but now they have an extra coupon for that shirt after they purchase, that might be the extra push to now have created two orders. You may have also noticed that I have this bar that says, congratulations, you've got free shipping. Currently, I have my shipping set to if you spend $75, which is about two of the products from the store, you get free shipping. And people absolutely love free shipping. So by offering this and letting them know where they are on their scale to if they're actually getting free shipping can help increase their order value by enticing them to either get a higher price product or buying more than one thing. The next really helpful tip I got was to change the color of my add to cart button. And unfortunately, using the theme that I use, I'm using Dawn, which is one of the free themes that Shopify creates, there was no easy way for me to change the add to cart button. But I did find this helpful tip with Shopify code on how to actually change the add to cart button using the Dawn theme. And I will link this in the comments below or in the description below or both, but I was able to actually do this by going into the code and you can just follow the instructions here and then changing the colors to what I wanted them to be. You seriously want your add to cart button to stick out. If it's not something someone's eyes just 
flow to. And with this, automatically, it was a white button with a black box around it, which looks like everything else on this page. It was not obvious to the customer right away on how to add this to cart. The next big tip I got, and something I could see in my store, is I was designing my store for desktop. That's what I'm creating Shopify on. The problem is 92% of my traffic was coming and purchasing on mobile. So you actually have to make sure you're going through your store in a mobile view. I'm always having my phone with me, refreshing to see how it actually appears. On Shopify, you can also take a look at mobile as you're designing, but just making sure that this also appears very clear on mobile and go through all of the steps because Yes, desktop is what we think people are gonna be shopping on, but we are in an age of mobile. The next thing that'll help conversion rate is making sure your customer is never confused. Do you offer returns? What happens about quality? So many different questions that they might have need to be addressed for them to purchase from you. I have not fully gotten set this all up. I'm still thinking about all the questions that I could possibly add to this, but things like what if my project is damaged? What sustainability practices do I follow? How long is it gonna take to get to them? What is your return policy? Every question someone might have needs to be shown and you can put it in your banner up here. You can put it in your frequently asked questions and you should also probably put it in your product page as well so it's never missed and the question is never still lingering in your customer's head. One of my first biggest conversion issues was that my website speed was so slow and I did not know why. I didn't have many apps in it and one thing that I figured out was it was just my imagers were too high. I was saving everything as giant size PNGs, which is usually kind of what I use for Etsy because they don't kind of have the same restrictions. But for Shopify, you don't want to have these massive files on your site. So instead I started saving everything as a JPEG and also using tinyjpeg.com to make the file size smaller, but the quality would stay the same. This drastically increased my site speed, which resulted in a better conversion rate. The next point ties back into the still being mobile focused, but you need to actually be able to shop from your homepage. If you can highlight your best sellers, things that have already proven to sell on your main page so that the first thing someone sees is very helpful. You can also add your new arrivals, any collections that you have that you think are going to do really well. Right now, again, the site is not live. I don't have tons of products in here to add my shop best sellers yet. These are also not on my Etsy. There were just ones I made for the purpose of this site to show this example so that we can grow this Shopify together and I can share what I've been learning while running my other Shopify store. I'd also like to know what part of Shopify are you struggling the most with? Getting a legal store set up? Are you having issues with ads, product designing? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've been running on Shopify and you have any suggestions for me, let me know because right now this series is just me sharing what I'm learning. I am not a Shopify professional yet, though I hope to be very shortly through running all these different stores, but I'd love to hear from you guys as well on what's worked in your store. My current next goal is learn about setting up successful email campaigns and I will cover what I've learned with you guys when I learn it in these videos. Thanks guys and I'll see you next week.